Hello, uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Higgs field and the Higgs boson particle. Um, but first I'm going to, I'm going to go over a bit about the history prior to this topic and talk about the knowledge physicist side of, of the universe in which we're responsible for leading Peter Higgs and other physicists for coming up with the Higgs field theory. Then I'm going to talk about what the relevance of this theory is, what were the challenges physicists faced. Uh, I will talk about the mechanisms that made this discovery possible and finish with the conclusion. So to start, our universe functions on what scientists believe to be four fundamental forces. Those forces are the strong force, the weak force, the electromagnetic force, and the gravitational force. Uh, when comparing these forces with the exception of gravity, they notice that the range of them are very asymmetrical, meaning that, for example, the weak force has a short range, while the electromagnetic force seems to have an infinite range. Physicists believe that at some point, there was a symmetry to our, our universe, or in other words, that these four forces actually came from a single one, which existed after the Big Bang. Um, scientists hope that one day they will be able to achieve the symmetry and merge these forces into one, which they call the Grand Unified Force, or GUF. But for that to happen, an unthinkable amount of energy is necessary. To put, it, to put it into perspective, a particle accelerator of the size of the solar system, system would be necessary to achieve such a feat. This energy, which is necessary to detect the GUF, is called the Grand Unified Energy, and it only existed moments after the Big Bang. Um, because in our present state of knowledge, that is not an achievable objective, physicists instead focused only on combining the electromagnetic force with the weak force to create what they call the um, electroweak force. In the 60s, Steve, Wim Steve Weinberg was able to come up with um, the electroweak force theory and to get to the point, and to get to that point, he had to first predict that the W and Z bosons, which are particles that constitute the weak force, were many times bigger than protons. Then 16 years later, in a historical moment for science, CERN was able to prove that these particles were a hundred, were actually a hundred times bigger than a proton, getting us closer to a complete framework for the electroweak force force theory, but there was still the problem of asymmetry. They needed to be able to explain what caused it, or in other words, they needed to understand and prove how different particles gather unique masses. Um, that is when Peter Higgs, along with other physicists, came into play during the, the same decades. They theorized that there was another fundamental force field, an omnipresent field that was responsible for imbuing fundamental particles with their masses. This force field came to be known as the Higgs field, and its, and its particle was named Higgs boson. Peter Higgs suggested that the W and Z bosons, for example, would get their masses by interacting with this force field, while protons I'm sorry, well, photons not interacting with it at all, and hence not gaining any mass, would just pass through it forever at the speed of light. So to clarify, the theory says that the more particles interact with the Higgs field, the more mass they will get. And because now they have mass, they travel to shorter distances. Peter Higgs's, um, Peter Higgs's theory then implied that 
Higgs field was responsible for giving mass to protons, <clears throat> which then eventually made them resist their continuous motion right after the Big Bang. It also means that this field is responsible for giving mass to electrons, which allowed protons to trap them, them and so form the element of hydrogen during the first stages of our universe. This, this means that without the Higgs field to give mass to fundamental particles like electrons and protons that I just mentioned, no hydrogen atom, atoms would exist. And without hydrogen, we would not have stars, galaxies, and life as we know it, making this theory extremely relevant and important to be proved. Uh, now, to be able to prove the Higgs field, that the Higgs field exists, <clears throat> it is necessary to know that force fields can be detected in two ways. For example, the electromagnetic field can be observed by making particles interact with it, like when electrons are slightly pulled by this force. Um, the second way is by producing the quantum particle associated with that force field, which in the case of the electromagnetic force is the photon being manifested in the form of light. But the first way of detection is not possible for this omnipresent Higgs field. For us to be able to detect it, we must produce its quantum particle, the Higgs boson. In order for us to do that, we need to make two protons particle at high energies collide against each other. But the energy required for this to happen was far too great for the prevailing particle accelerators in the 60s. In addition, the, cost, the costs for producing a particle accel accelerator back then was too costly, not to mention the possible risk of creating such an accelerator and end up not being able to prove this theory in the end. Such difficulty to prove the existence um, of this field and to find the Higgs boson particle led the American Nobel Prize winner and physicist Leo, Leon Leatherman to write about it in a book which was entitled The God Particle. If the universe is the answer, what is the question? That was back in 1993. It's important to know that this was not the original title though, because the particle was so hard to find. Leatherman wanted to call this book the goddamn particle in a way to express the frustration physicists were having because it was now almost two decades and no one was yet able to prove the existence of the Higgs field. The publisher was concerned with the somewhat strong language and so did not allow Leatherman to publish the book with that title. Um, then, um, <clears throat> then they had the idea of shortening it to God instead of Godem in order to make it an, into an acceptable title for the publisher. <clears throat> Unfortunately for the scientific community, his name stuck and insisted insist the Higgs boson has been better known as the God particle, which caused a lot of sur superstition in the general public leading people to believe that the famous particle accelerator, the uh, Large Hadron Collider, was a portal to hell because it was going to be used to try to find the Higgs boson or what they thought was to be the God particle. The way physicists discover new particles is by colliding them at extremely high speeds and looking at the debris they, they leave behind. To make that possible, physicists needed to build an extremely large circular particle accelerator. Back in 1980, planning for such an accelerator started, and it was not until 2008 that the Large Hadron Collider, the most advanced piece of technology on our planet, 
started being used. The LHC is powerful enough to be capable of accelerating particles for collision to nearly the speed of light, which is an, which is an impressive achievement. Many experiments with collision have been performed since LHC started being put to use, including colliding protons against each other. It was not until 2013, almost 40 years uh, since Peter Higgs came up with this theory, that the LHC, which is located at CERN, accelerated two protons at nearly the speed of light and collided them against each other, allowing physicists to detect the Higgs boson with a 99.9% .9 confidence level. And so the Higgs field was then proven. <clears throat> um, now to go, now to go more into the how into the how the particle accelerator LHC works, the name itself partly explains how it works. Um, ele elementary particles like protons and electrons are, are accelerated to extremely high speeds, and then they are smashed against each other. These collisions produce massive particles like the up and down quarks or the Higgs boson. These particles last for only a, flat, a fraction of a second, and then they immediately decay into new particles. These collisions not only help us understand the composition of elementary particles, but also complement our knowledge of the universe's origin immediately after the Big Bang. <clears throat> there are linear and circular accelerators. The LHC is an example of a circular accelerator, meaning that it accelerates particles in a circular path and in opposite directions to then smash them against each other when desired. LHC is the largest particle accelerator in the world, having a circumference of 27 kilometers, which is created in the length of Manhattan, New York. In the LHC, the beam, the beam of elementary particles travel in vacuum inside a metal beam pipe, keeping air and dust out in order to reach the maximum speed possible. A combination of special equipment is placed around the tube to produce strong electric field, to produce a strong electric field, which allow the particles to achieve such high speeds. They switch from negative to positive at a, at a certain rate, which creates um, the effect of pulling and pushing the particles until they reach the desired speed. Uh, in addition, there are a number of electromagnets placed along the circular path to make sure that the beam of particles is focused in one place as they accelerate. The LHC can reach a maximum of 6.5 trillion electron volts. And when protons carrying this magnitude of energy collide against each other, the energy is transformed into mass in the form of Higgs uh, boson, for example, which agrees with the um, E equals MC squared formula of Einstein, which states that mass and energy are interchangeable. Um, <clears throat> so to conclude, the discovery of the Higgs field is just the beginning. It is speculated that many different versions of the field would eventually establish not only symmetry, but also something called the supersymmetry, which is an extended standard, standard model that will um, hopefully fill the gaps of, in knowledge that still remain. This um, would also include whatever makes up dark matter, the field that currently seems to, to be even more mysterious than the Higgs field. These are my, my sources, and thank you so much for, for your time and patience.